Today on Logan Lee Adventures, it's all about the glorious nature that makes South Africa a standout in today's journey across the Rainbow Nation. My boyfriend Yuri and I goof off a ton, drive a ton, and continue our love affair with this wonderful country. Morning, guys, from Haskop. Haskop. I think that's how you pronounce it in South Africa. So we left our accommodation from Sabi this morning. It's about 7:30 a.m. and we just drove through and we're in this new town and we're gonna stop by here for some Benekok or Benekokin, which is basically Dutch for, or well, I guess it would count as Afrikaans for pancakes too. I'm starting the day with good old. Coffee milkshake, and then Yerun has this strawberry milkshake before pancakes on that. These pancakes are stuffed to the brim, so we got cinnamon sugar on them, and then inside one of our pancakes, we got a custard tart stuffed up in there, and the other one is also cinnamon sugar on top, and with uh, apple crumble type pie stuffed in the side of it. What is this yummy, delicious South African snack that I'm obsessed with? Botong is basically raw meat of uh, whichever animal. And then you marinate it, you salt it, and you hang it up to dry. And the drying process takes about three to four days to dry the meat, the raw meat. Uh, and then, but it has to be in a very particular temperature that you dry because you can't do it in too hot of a temperature or else the meat will just get sucked all up and then you can get it too cold or else you'll freeze the meat. So what you have left is kind of this dried meat biltong that is really chewable, really different flavors. So some are really salty, some are really tender and juicy, but it's just good old meat sticks. <laughs> I wouldn't even call it sticks, but like just like chunks of meat. The fog is so thick that we can only see what's ahead of us and that's I think it's obviously estimated like two meters ahead of us. As you can see, it cleared up a little bit. We made it to this place called the Mac Mac Falls, but first we have to hike, do a little hike to get to the waterfalls. As I said, this one is quite a way to the top, really tests one fitness levels. Amazing views of the waterfall and you can go all the way down here. The Mac Mac Falls are in the Blade River Canyon, so, or the Blyde, I think it's Blyde, it's pronounced Blyde, not Blade. So, the Blyde River Canyon is this gorgeous huge piece of canyon that runs through this part of South Africa. And the Blyde River Canyon is actually the third biggest canyon in the world, right after Namibia's own Fish Creek Canyon, and then right after the Grand Canyon in the United States. Welcome to Lisbon Falls. This is another beautiful waterfall in the Blyde River Canyon. And as you can see, it's huge. There's actually two. Good waterfall, right? Yeah, very cool. And you're so great climbing down. So, making our way down. Here if you have something that you can grip her uh, behind. It's a little more. No, closer. Look at me. More there. Oh, now she's smiling. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. 
We are now at Burke's Luck Pop Hall, which are the original halls where basically people came for the gold rush in South Africa. So this is one of the areas and then you can see it's right in the Blyde River Canyon as well and it's surrounded by all these beautiful sculpted canyons and rocks. You can see right there. And you cross this beautiful bridge to the other side. Essentially, these potluck holes are the results of decades of swirling eddies of waters where the two rivers meet the Blyde River, the tumult of which has caused extensive water erosion over time. The result is a series of cylindrical rock sculptures that look as though they would be more comfortable on the moon. I imagine this is what the Badlands look like. All the people before us who were by these rivers washing away looking for gold. Alright guys, this is called the Three Rendezvous. I think this was called. And this is the final, final epic view of all Blyde River Canyon. Ready? Here we go. M D A V E L. It was W. Yeah, yeah it was W. But I think you pronounce it rendezvous. Yeah, but not rendezvous. <laughs> rendezvous. The row headed for the woods. Bulls fled for the desert. The indigo girls went to the mountains. We humans disappeared into wild and secluded places when we needed to reset, to lap up the landscape, shape our thoughts, and feel the perspective giving stab of strangeness, even menace, of a place unmoored from the familiar. <laughs> we take Mother Earth for far more granted than any other species, and it's a shame that there is so much wonder, such craft of sublime beauty out here in the world that people either neglect, mistreat, or just don't care about. But when you're sitting on the edge of a cliffside with your feet dangling over a canyon, the world is just that much more simple, that much more touchable, and that much more personable than what people have been telling you your whole entire life. What a day! We just had a really awesome trip through the Blyde River Canyon in South Africa and now we're in this small little town one of these small little towns of Af in South Africa called Houtsprout Is it Houtsprout? Houtsprout Houtsprout That's how you pronounce it and now we're just going to go to grab some late night eats before calling it a night so this restaurant is called Kala La Pasta <laughs> So you guessed it, it's an Italian restaurant, the only Italian restaurant in uh, a while. Here we have our peanut butter milkshake. Yes, that's right. A burger with hash browns and guacamole smothered all over it. A couple of cheese, tomatoes, lettuce. And the burger somewhere in there. There we go. Chicken. Morning guys! We did a drive, it was about two hours, and we drove all the way up the side of the Blyde River Canyon, up one of the mountain to Mariscop, and we're at one of the viewpoints in Mariscop. And this viewpoint, hardly anyone ever goes up here. First of all, this is like, it's dominated by mostly cell towers. So mostly only workers, like Vodacom workers, would come up here and you know, do things with cell towers. And we're pretty much in the clouds right now, as you can see. It's huge. It's just like this kind of like rolling mist towards us and there's a car. And along the sides are the basically the edge of the world or the edge of the mountain. And 
Sometimes when the clouds move beyond enough, you can see the view from the town below, like all the way below. You can see parts of the canyon rafting around us too. But other than that, it's a really cool spot for people who've been to South Africa before or looking for a place that hardly anyone ever comes to because I mean, we're the only ones here. And when we had to sign in at the gate below, there was two other people that came today, like the whole entire day, which you rarely get in this area because it's so populated because of people coming in for Kruger National Park and Black River Canyon. But here it's just quiet and peaceful. And really, you're on top of everything. If you can see a view, which you can kind of see here. Today is all about kind of doing things that you didn't really expect to do in this region of South Africa and yeah, Marie's Cop, definitely one of it, this mountain right here. In the next video, our South African adventure got us with lions and safari galore. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up and leave us a comment below which place in the Blyde River Canyon was your favorite.